Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cat Dad Things. We've managed to find ourselves back in Albion Online, and today we're going right back into the Corrupted Dungeons. We're going to bring our claws out, look at some new opponents, and try and pick it apart and see how we can improve our gameplay. Also, we have a new weapon set we're going to bring into this video so we can get more of a variety in our fights and things such as that. Remember, it's okay to die. So get out there, get your sets, and go die a lot. That's how we practice, that's how we get better at this game. So let's get into it. In this fight, we're back at it with our claws. We have the Clerical, we have the Wanderlust, Mercenary Jacket, kind of a standard build that we've done already with our resistance pot. This time we're fighting against someone with black hands. So black hands is also in the dagger set with the claws. So our mobility is kind of similar. Uh, before I started this fight, I trying to scout things out, which normally we should do. Most of the time you want to inspect your opponent to see what they're building. So I went to the crystal instead to try and bait him into me. And I'm also stacking up my passive with my Q. You see those little daggers around me? That gives you a damage bonus and it stacks up to three times. So I thought maybe I could draw him in and get off a lot of my damage with the added stacks, of course. But he wasn't having it. He wasn't buying it. He's, he's playing around the traps because he probably thinks I'm trying to bait him or something. But he actually comes at me with the Shadow Edge, which is a stun ability. And he goes in, he uses his E, he throws me back. So he wins this fight. I mean, he definitely wins that scrap. I use my Resist Pot, I go to E him, he goes in Viz. So he won that. But thankfully, we keep a calm head, we use our boots to get out of there, we make sure to dodge that second Shadow Edge, because if he landed that, I was a goner. There's no way I was going to be able to survive that. Now, the W that I use, the Throwing Blades, Whenever you hit mobs with that, it actually gives you a speed boost. So that gave me just big enough of a gap that I could get away from him, let my health regen, and we can retry this fight. It's regening slowly because I didn't bring food, but generally in these low level fights, I don't do that because most of the time it's an all or in kind of fight, kind of usually how they work. So he's coming back for me, walking through the traps. We're just being mindful, getting a lay of the dungeon, making sure we know what's going on. So this time I ice blocked to block his E damage and also not to get hit by the trap. That probably would have taken me out as well. Now you can see he's very mobile, just like I am. He has the same Q equipped. So this fight is gonna be more about who can really do the most damage and get the other person down as quick as possible. I do have more regeneration on me because I have the bloodlust on my jacket, but he can go invisible. So he can wait for his cooldowns a lot better than I can. So when I, when I throw my cooldowns out, I have to make sure that I'm going for it. I'm going for the kill, I'm going for the target, and he knows that. So he's trying to play this more knockback style where he's gonna hit me away, gain some ground, wait for cooldowns, come back in. But he's going a little aggressive this time, so I'm just waiting for him to throw out his ability so I can dodge it. Especially when you know what they're gonna do, sometimes it's best to play it back, play it safe. See, he uses his run, he tries to get away from me, but obviously, I have Wanderlust, so my run is a lot better. He uses Invis, and I notice that now, so I just wait. He's going to E me, and I can't stop that. I Ice Blocked there to try and keep him away from me to wear down his Poison Pot. Now I use my Jacket, I use my E, and we're just scrapping with each other. But in this case, a full front fight like that, Claws will win. It will beat Black Hands. Black Hands has to wait for the cooldown of their E to really win that fight. So he goes back in, he E's me, but he didn't wait long enough for my resist pot to wear off, which was a mistake on his part. And here we go again, we've seen this before, he runs away and he starts walking into the trap and the trap does the job for me. So again, stand your ground sometimes. We saw earlier in this fight that it was a good idea to run away and kind of make sure that we're okay, but stand your ground when it's necessary. Learn that skill and you'll increase in your win rate so much more when you understand when it's time to fight and when it's time to run. Now for this fight, we're going with the same kind of a build. Quick PSA, don't forget to change your abilities to PvP from PvE. Don't want to be caught with that in the middle of a fight. This time though, we're fighting against someone with Plate Frost. I haven't done much fighting against Plate Frost in the Stalker level. I know it was a big thing in Slayer for the for a while. I'm not sure if that's still a meta choice, but in certain builds, you could see, yeah, you don't do a lot of damage with Plate Frost, but you can kite your enemy because it's Frost, and they can't necessarily burst you as fast because you're wearing Plate. So in this fight, there he is. He just goes right at it. Now I charge in to see what he's got. You do the inspect. Make sure to inspect any time that you can see. Check out their abilities. 
you can kind of understand after a while, after you do these fights and you play them out, you kind of understand what people are going to do before they do it. So I throw my W out to try and get some speed. I go for the E and smartly, that's when he jumps away. He didn't jump away before. He wasted. He waited for me to waste my E, which is smart. So now that I did that, I need to get some ground because he's just going to kite me out. I need to get away from him to get that E cooldown. We start fighting. I throw the W to get close to him, but he uses his run already. Now, the nice thing about Q2 on Claws is you can still jump even though you're frozen. He throws his poison out. He uses his helmet. I'm almost dead, but I don't ice block. I don't use my potion just yet because I know I can regen all of my health quickly and I can get that E off just right. Not panicking and using my abilities. We just outright fight. I have my boots going and he's dead. Now, he had a mercenary jacket as well with Bloodlust e equipped on it, but... At least until the patch, it's upcoming in the new update, um, Mercenary Jacket will change. But for now, Mercenary Jacket, it's more beneficial to get as many hits off as you can to get that regen. Claws attacks very fast, so you can get your HP back very fast. He had a, a Frost Staff, so his attacks aren't quite as fast as mine. That's why he couldn't really get as much HP during that fight as much as I did. And you even saw at the end of it, I still had my Ice Block, so I still had some tricks up my sleeve. But because we didn't panic, we weren't just mashing our buttons because we're in the middle of the fight or close to death at one point. We stayed calm, we thought through it, and we won the fight. Now for these fights, I decided to switch over to the one-handed spear to show more of a variety and kind of a little bit more sweaty gameplay. You can see the price is about 250k, that's what you average, so there's a lot more to lose with this build. But you are a lot stronger as well. You have the one-handed spear, the torch, hunter hood the Merc Jacket. This time I'm using an actual cape because before I just used a flat cape which gives you basically no stats. But the most expensive piece that I have right now is the Royal Boots. The nice thing about Royal Boots is when you use it, you go very slow for a few seconds. It's like ramping up your speed and then you have a really long sprint. But during that sprint, you get a huge defensive buff and it's really changed the meta in the Corrupted Dungeon. This It's changed the gameplay a lot because it's pretty strong when you have that defense on. Here we are in the dungeon and this time I'm invading. Sometimes what I like to do is I check my map constantly to see if the mobs are being cleared because you can actually see them on your map and you can see when the red dots move. Kind of gives you an idea where your opponent is if a seeker hasn't found them. But the nice thing about spears is I like to go the lifesteal passive. And that's because spears, when you get the stacks on you, like the little spears, it's, it's much, like dag much like daggers. And the fact that you get a buff from it. And for spears, it increases your auto attack damage, which in turn makes that lifesteal passive even stronger. It gets to a point where you actually get quite a bit of, of health back just from that. And it works really nice with the bloodlust as well. So I see my opponent and immediately I use my boots for the defensive buff. But actually the royal boots can let you do that. You can inspect them and wait, but you get that charge on them and you can just rush in and it's really powerful. So you see here, he ice blocked. I mean, I just shred right through his HP. But you'll notice here in a second, sometimes even though you have good equips and good items, not checking the, your enemy's build can cost you the fight because he had a cleric robe. And right at the end, he got that immunity and damage bonus and actually almost won that fight. So no matter what, if you can, always try to inspect your opponent so you know what you can outplay and what you might have to maneuver around because that guy almost beat me. And I messed up. You know, you can still inspect during the fight. With a lot of these fights that I'm showing in this video, I'm just rushing in. But you can still get in the habit of hitting Y even before you engage them. As soon as you see them, you can still do that. It's a good habit to form. Another fight with the one-handed spear. With the abilities that I use for this, it's the same as the last fight. But especially the W, I like to go with the Impaler ability because it has good range, it does a decent amount of damage, and it does slow your enemy. That along with your Qs, your Ease of Gap Closer, you can get to range targets pretty nicely. Or even people who are trying to do more of a poke style on you, you can actually fight back against that. Now the Impaler unlocks at Mastery 70, so it does take a while to actually be able to use it. But once you, you get there, once you use it, it's always my default. And depending on the matchup that I'm up against, I will change it. But as a default, I always go for the Impaler on my W. Generally, when I get ready for a fight, I like to try and seek the person out. Most of the times, I don't wait for people to come to me. 
because sometimes you can catch people off guard, especially with the Royal Boot build. It's really useful. You can find people in the middle of mobs, in the middle of traps, and that's exactly what happens here. I start looking around, and they're already chunked in their HP. They're using abilities, they're fighting mobs, so I just rush in there and I take them out. And the fight was lost right at the beginning. Like, there's no way they can recover from that, even if their build is pretty solid. Sometimes people can get away, but if the opportunity presents itself, strike. Get yourself an easy kill, and the loot is all yours. For this fight, I tried a new variation, only on the helmet. I went for Guardian Helmet, just because with the Hunter Hood, Retaliate is strong, but you have that ability on your spear built in already, and it's only a four second window. So it's sometimes it's kind of hard to get the full value out of a Hunter Hood. So for this time, I thought I'll just go for more survivability. Plus, when you use a shield on your helmet, if someone has like Bloodlust, for example, they're not going to get benefits of healing hitting into the shield because they have to be doing damage to your HP. Whereas the shield, they're doing damage to that. So in, in some interaction, it actually helps in, in some fights. But of course, that all depends on your opponent's build. So I see them. They're poking around. I'm trying to play it cool, not charge in just yet. Because this time I wanted to see what kind of build the opponent had. And it turns out they have a bow, which is perfect. This build that I have is a perfect counter to bows. So I see that they have that, they have invisibility, they have smoke bomb. So what I do is I try to get some ground because I don't want to be caught up in these traps. And as soon as I can, I change my ability to deflecting spin. Deflecting spin is amazing because it it's just like retaliate on your helmet, except it's a channel. It gives you back energy and the cooldown on, on it is so small. It's amazing. So now I decide I'm just going to go in because I don't want to be caught up in all these traps. So I use my royal boots. They use their smoke bomb and he starts hitting me. But I have deflecting spin, which again is the perfect counter to bows. So he tries to get away from me. I'm trying to play it cool because I was just slowed by the trap. But he's got nowhere to go. He's pinned in between traps. My cooldowns are starting to go down. And he's trying to bait me in. So he uses the Q knockback, but I see that coming. So I try and juke that. Again, he uses his ability, starts firing arrows at me. I have deflecting spin. It's actually hurting him more than it's hurting me. Use my health pot to try and stay healthy. He tries to knock me back, but now I got the knock up on him. So all I have to do now is just run him down because I have the fight. I have bloodlust going. I have my royal boots back up again and simply just have to run him down. Now, bows have a lot of kite ability. You can see with the frost shot there. Uh, you have to watch out for that sometimes, but with the spear, you're really gonna be okay, especially with that deflecting spin. As you see here, as a last ditch effort, he goes invisible, but he kills himself on my reflect damage. So again, Spears is personally one of my favorite weapons. It's not like the best in every single situation. It's like a jack of all trades. It's good in almost any kind of situation. 1v1s, 1v2s, you can find a good use for almost any spear in these situations. So personally, I would recommend if you want to get really good at PVP, try a spear build. There's so many different variations as well. That about wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching some more Corrupted Dungeon uh, fights. With the claws, again, it's, it's all about just learning the dungeon, learning how to fight, not being afraid to die. And once you feel more confident, you can go for the stronger builds, the more expensive builds. Like the spear one that I ran is about 250k as opposed to the 40 to 50k of the claw build. But you see the benefit of it. Once you get the mastery points that you need, you can really get confident about these fights and take away lots of wins because you're just that much more powerful. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more ideas or anything that you want to see, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know. And I'll be happy to try and make a guide or some kind of a video about it. So thanks again. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.